Hey guys, thank you for checking out our video. My name's Sean Elders and this is Pinnacle Combat Arts. Like, subscribe, comment down below, hit the bell so you can be notified every time we get a new video. Today we're going to be talking about the three Three different types of attacks inside the Hubud with empty hand. Let's get started. All right, so Hubud. If you're, I've, I've done a several different videos on how to do Hubud. We're not going to go into great detail. There's the, actually one of the first videos I ever did was uh, on Hubud. Uh, but we've got, I've got several instructional video videos uh, you can watch on my YouTube channel on Hubud. Um, so we're going to get right into it. Three different types of attacks. I want you to think of Hubud as it's like a shell, and in that shell you can throw all kinds of things into your into the Hubud. We have Hubud empty hand, we have Hubud with single knife, we have Hubud with double knife, we have Hubud with single stick or double stick, single sword, double sword, all kinds of things going on. Okay, there's all sorts of different ways to do Hubud with stick and dagger, all that kind of stuff. So the thing that I want you to really understand is, is that the Hubud is a like a shell. And in that shell, you throw in whatever is necessary. In my classes, a lot of times what I'll do, this is for the instructors or people that when you're in training, you could do some training throughout your, let's say your training class is an hour long. It could be longer, but an hour long. That last 10, 15 minutes of class, you can do different types of hubud and throw in the material that you've been working on inside that hoop and what it does is it helps develop the timing, line formalization, learning how to identify uh, the attacks inside of that exercise and learning how to bring out those different moves inside that exercise. And so that's, another, that's one aspect of hoobah. The other aspect is, is that you're feeling energy and learning how the change in movement, timing and things like that will start to help you identify when attack is about to take place. Because when we are getting into close quarter range, that is the most dangerous range. And a lot of people have, that's where people really get, they get scared. If you watch, for instance, a UFC fight, that's why nobody really stands in, in, a, in a close range for very long. You either go straight to clinch into the ground or you stay outside that, what we call in boxing, the pocket. Because people are just scared and they're not very good at being in that range. Well, with the Filipino martial arts, that's what's so great is that we can work inside all these different ranges and learn how to navigate through them. So here we go. So Hubud, uh, when we're doing basic Hubud, okay, the idea is that you're learning how to redirect that energy when that energy is coming down at me. I'm redirecting that movement and I'm going through. So one of the basic moves that we can do inside of here is and the way that I actually want to think about this is, is that I'm going to show you a couple like basic Panatukan movements. Okay. Um, one of the basic, basic ways to do Panatukan when we're in close range, you have two different ways to do it. If, if for instance, I go like this to him, he can either cover it. Okay. Or he can bob and weave it. Okay. Those are two of the basic ways to deal with that attack. Now, what can happen is, is that we can, when there is a high level of pressure, and you're not ready enough to duck, bob, and weave out of the movement, um, or you're in trapping range, and you're just you're in this clinch kind of movement here. And I come in, I try to throw that attack. He's got to cover it up, okay? So the in class, if you're, for instance, if you're training, you're with your training partner, or if you're in class, and you wanna you wanna think of this as uh, an exercise and a a technique that you can practice is I he does cover like this. And he just starts off doing covers just like that. Okay. And what he wants to do is he actually wants to turn this out at a diagonal, what I would call wedging out with the elbow so that when I'm making, he's making contact with the inside of my forearm. Notice when he does do the cover, he's lifting his shoulder up high. Okay. So that punch is harder to get in and hit him. And, it, and when I'm trying to hit him in the chin here like this, you know, he's angulating that movement. Okay, he's angulating that elbow. The other part is, is that once you get that down and you do lots of exercise like this, then what we can do is we can then add in extra stuff. 
But the idea is that you want to first learn how to deal with those attacks. So for instance, we're doing Hubud. Let's do Hubud. Yep. And then what happens is, is that I want to do an attack. Okay. And so I can do that at any time. I can just go here. Boom. He covers it. See that? And I go back into the Hubud. Okay. And then I go here. Boom. And I could do a little bit of telegraphing just to kind of let him see it. We're going to tell You're going to telegraph a little bit because it, to, to create any kind of power behind that movement, you're going to have to move your body like this to do it as well. Okay. And when you throw it overhand or hook, you're going to use, need to use body mechanics. Okay. So let's do who bud. Yep. So he's already <laughs> ready to go, man. So when I come here, I'm just going like that and he's already there. We go here, boom, just like that. And so see how I'm shifting my weight. That kind of helps him understand what I'm doing. Obviously I could do like a slap or something like that. Um, that can take place too. But what you're really trying to do is you're trying to think about developing the understanding of identifying body mechanics, paying attention to the chest or using it in this close, you'd actually use your peripheral vision, but uh, you're learning how to understand and identify how attacks take place. Mm -hmm. So we're doing that hubud. I'm this close. I call this busy hands. The hubud is like busy hands. So all we're doing is we're just doing this, but then there is a break in timing and that cover comes in. So you just like that, okay? And so he likes it. See how he gets excited? <laughs> he loves it, you know? If you're you're a true combat guy, you love getting it mixed up, love getting mixed up with it. <laughs> yeah, see that? So there's that. Then the next part is when, if he puts that attack out at me, I cover it up. And then I come in with the elbow. He does the other side, I cover up, and then I do that elbow. He does the other side, I cover up, and I do that elbow. So we'll practice just going like this. Boom, and he does the movement. 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 Back and forth. Okay. All right. Okay, and so you do that repetition over and over and over again, making sure that you get the proper mechanics down, okay? This is the next level. Like I said before, you need to be able to do bob and weave. You need to be able to do covers first. You need to be boxing and, when, and if his hands are up and I come like that, he can cover that already. See, that? See how he bob and weaved out of the way of that punch, okay? So you need to be able to, you, this is the next level, okay? When we think of Panatukan or Sudokan, okay, or any kind of empty hand you can use, whatever name you want to use, there's all these arguments about what the name is. Who cares, okay? What matters is that you're developing the skills to be able to navigate around these attacks, okay? Um, if you get caught up in the name, you're wasting so much time, okay? It's so important that the most important thing is that you develop fighting skills. Okay, I'm so sick and tired of people telling me somebody has been doing this for doing martial arts for 40 years this year. I've been doing martial arts, trying to tell me what something is. Okay, forget about that and get the training done. Do you have the same skills? Huh? Then you should be out there training. Okay, so the idea is, is that I want you to focus on developing keen skills, fighting skills. Okay, all right. So the next thing, part of this is when I, when I go to that cover, he's going to go up and hit that bicep. Boom. Hit that bicep. Boom. Hit that bicep. Boom. Hit that bicep. Back and forth. Just like that. See? So notice like this. See this? When I'm coming, I'm trying to hit him right in the chin or the side of the head and his arm is in the, right in there in, in the way. He gets in the way of me hitting him. Okay? And then he comes in with that counter. The elbow comes up. That elbow um is it, is super important we call it a seco okay when he throws that hook boom okay i did the cover first let's just do it on this side and i come up straight up on that bicep here if i do it on this side i'm driving forward and doing it. that's an important part too you got to drive forward okay you don't want to drive back in other words if he throws that hook you don't want to go like this because he can slide right up inside that when he throws the hook you want to come in and drive and then you come in See, and that's when we can drive the other side boom and we come up and we get aggressive okay 
That's the way you need to handle those movements, okay? Super important, okay? So then the next part is you have the third step that I'm gonna give you. There's, I can show you a million, you've seen probably a million, but the whole point is, is it's the way that you train. All this has to do with the way that you train. So we cover, go, and this time I'm gonna have you just chop right into the neck, okay? Now, if they throw a punch with the other hand, I just come straight in with that arm and capture that, and then the elbow would come straight to the face, okay? If he does the hook, boom, okay? I can also, instead of me going here and doing the elbow to the bicep, I can always do it to the face. Remember that too, okay? You don't have to do it to the bicep. But a lot of times when people hook, he's doing real tight hooks right now, but a lot of times people do, when they do hooks, they can do real wide hooks like this. And that's where my elbow isn't close to his face right here. Let's do it on the other side, long hook. Boom, notice where I'm, I'm th driving that. I'm driving it here. I'm not driving it, it to the bicep when it's a long hook, because why? This can still get me. I'm gonna drive it into that forearm, and then I'm going up straight up to the bicep, okay? Then I hack into the neck. Or if he throws a punch with the other hand, I'm coming in with this, and then I'm coming in with the other elbow, okay? So th these are little concepts that I'm trying to teach you from the beginning instead of you wasting a lot of time or, or having some kind of ideology where it has to be the certain way. No, okay? You have to adapt as it comes, okay? These are what I would call, you wanna just think of these as templates, okay? He covers, drives up, and goes to the chop, okay? Drive, drives up, chops, cover, drive up, chop. Cover, elbow, 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 chop. Practice that thousands and thousands, not hundreds, thousands and thousands of times. That's how you get good, okay? So then what we can do is we can, we'll start off, all I want you to do is do the cover, okay, inside the hood. So first phase would be, I come here and he covers. Back to it, covers, see that? And we're just going back and forth, developing. And then that, what's nice about the feeder is they're learning, you're learning at different times I could throw that attack. See that? Boom, see, notice how I lean? I wanna move my head off to the side. I don't wanna leave my head in the middle where he can hit me easier. My head's gotta be constantly moving once we get into striking, okay? So who bud? yep. Okay, now he's gonna do the Seco up. Boom, Seco up, yep. Back to Hubud. See, go up. Back to the Hubud. Yep. See, go up. Back to the Hubud. Yep. See, go up. Okay. That's the second phase. Then the third phase would be with adding the chop. Yep. Good. changing rhythm, changing timing, throwing it in a different spots, okay? So what I want you to do is you slowly integrate it one step at a time, adding one at a time until you got all the whole flow. The last and final move that I want you to do is practices, and we're gonna do it without the hubud first, okay? Is that when I hook like this, okay, he starts to do the, the, the elbow, and that's when I throw the punch. He's gonna chop, or he can put that elbow out, yep. And he can cover that, put the hand on there, and then elbows with this side. Boom, okay? So if he did it to me, we'll start with, we'll do with this hand first, we'll hook, so I'm here, okay? I go to go here, and he's starting to throw that punch. Now notice what I just did with my hands. I went across his eyes as I did that. You may not get it, that's okay. Okay, once I'm in this position, boom. Notice I, I hit his face with my fingers a little bit right there. See that? But do that, boom. I'm going here and boom, right across the eyes here, this comes to the elbow. And we can do that same movement. Now notice where I'm at now. I could go into this type of stuff, see that? But the whole point is, is that you're developing these keen understanding of what can take place. We have to be able to have adaptation inside of this, okay? He gives me the hook on this side, boom. I come here and I'm, I'm already monitoring for that rear hand. 
Now I can notice I could go right to this elbow. It could be an elbow destruction, okay? It could be an elbow cover right here. It could be a straight to the straight. If I get there before he can throw that punch and he's just punching my back or whatever, that's fine too. It could be any of those things, but it's about developing that skill level, okay? And so he throws the punch, boom, and I come in here and right there, I'm already ready to go. That's why we went here and my chop is here, but that chop can turn right into an elbow destruction, okay? An elbow cover, okay? A hand stop, okay? Or I can come straight in and go to the eyes like this, or I can come straight in with the elbow right here, okay? But you drill it, all right? So I go one, boom, boom, and then he's gonna stop me, see that? I go to this side, bam, bam, and then I throw that punch, yep. I go here. Just like that. Yep. There you did something else there. <laughs> Boom. See that? Boom. And I'm going right in here. And notice I'm I'm directed it right where I need to direct mm -hmm. it. One, two, and I'm going there. One, two, and I'm going there. See that? And he's doing different things and he's kind of playing around with it. You could start off, you start off real slow. You know, you're just going like this. He's doing the movement, you know, and then you can just slight give it nice and slow at first. And then eventually you're gonna be, you know, you're gonna try to catch him you know, or whatever, but one step at a time. Now what you do is you throw that with the hula, okay? And so I'm going like this and I go here and then I throw that punch and oh, yep, let's do it again, <laughs> okay? So I'm here and I hear, boom, and then boom, there it is. See that? And now what it does is it helps him start to monitor where that punch could come from. You already know that punch it can come. And that to me, I think that is one of the most important things when it comes to these exercises is that you already know where your openings are. Okay, this goes back to line familiarization. Learning how to identify attacks, learning how to identify openings. And once you know those two things, then you can go to the third level to this is, is learning how or knowing where you are open and how to already be ready for that next move. All right, I hope this helps. I'll see you guys next time. Panatukin, level one. This program is one of the most streamlined. It's over eight and a half hours long. It gives you everything step-by-step, step, everything that you need, fundamentals, breakdown of all the exercises you need, understanding of empty hand, how to use fight without gloves, with gloves. It's gonna teach you all the aspects that you need about the foundation and fundamentals of Panatukin, okay? Unlike what we see a lot of times now in the combatives in the Filipino martial arts world, a lot of techniques, a lot of drills, but how do you make those drills go from the drill to actual real combatives? And that's what this program, this is the first level to that and getting you set up, learning all the aspects of how do I engage? What's the techniques? What do I need to practice to get myself where I'm able to be able to be adaptable in combat? Okay, that's the most important thing. That's what everybody's looking for. How do I get better? How do I get, how am I able to adapt when somebody attacks me? What am I supposed to do? How am I supposed to do it? What I'm gonna do is I'm giving you a different perspective on Panatukin, unlike what you see in this modern day where you see a lot of drills and exercises, that just don't translate to real combat. I call the meat and potatoes of combat. Not the fluff, not all the extra stuff, but only simply the things that you really need that are gonna help you be effective in combat. But the most important thing in combat is to survive. The most important thing is to be able to adapt, okay? And so that's what this program is all about. This is gonna help you go to that next level. It doesn't matter if you're a beginner or you've been doing this for 10 years, I'm gonna help fill in those gaps, fill in those holes that you've never learned before. Go to our website, pinnaclecombatarts.com. There you can find out more about what I do, and the classes that I provide. Thank you guys so much for your support, and have a great day.